and welcome to the real last final video of the series as we do Secrets of the Waterloo and City Line. So this video is going to last 3 minutes 40 seconds, which is the average amount of time it takes the train to do a one stop between Waterloo and Bank. Now we knew that just with two stations, this would be a problem from the start, which is why right from the beginning when we planned this, we've been really sneaky. We bring to an end this whole series of videos. We've done all 11 lines now. Because we knew the Waterloo and City would be hard to find facts for and a shorter video, we misdirected you on purpose, just for a bit of fun, with some things that weren't true, because they all pertain to the Waterloo and City line instead. So right back in the first video on the Victoria line, I told you this, and it's the only tube line to run entirely underground. It's not, especially when you consider that the depot is above ground. In fact, the Waterloo and City is the only line that is entirely underground. Then on the Hammersmith and City line video, I told you that the two platforms there were the highest numbered at any tube station. That was also misleading on purpose. The highest number of platforms of any tube station are at Waterloo on the Waterloo and City, where they are platforms number 25 and 26. Then on the Circle Line video at Euston Square, I told you this. It's the only station in Zone 1 where you can get in without going through a ticket barrier. It's not, as the Waterloo end of the Waterloo and City was the first Zone 1 station where you could enter the tube system without going through a barrier. And then on to the Metropolitan Line, where I told you the biggest whopper of all. It's a shame, if it had still been running today, it would have been the only place on the underground where four car trains run back and forth. The Waterloo and City Line is the last place on the tube network that has trains made up of just four carriages. So I put those lines into the previous videos on purpose, but don't worry, the Waterloo and City has got two amazing things of its own. So we've come outside and round the corner to Lower Marsh and Spur Road because I absolutely have to show you this, this is great. How do you get Waterloo and City Line trains down there? The answer is through this blue grill and that crane, and you can peer in and you can see that this is where they lift the trains, one carriage or one car at a time, up and out onto a low load of truck. This is where it happens. And the second, no word of a lie, is the best thing and the best tube secret that we've had in the entire series, and it's up this corridor at Bank Station. But on the corridor that links the DLR, which is that way, down to the Waterloo and City Line. And when they were building this in 1987, the people digging this tunnel came across this. It's a great head shield. It's been left in place from when the Waterloo and City line was dug and they just left it here. And if you get your hand, you can literally run your fingers along the edge of the machine that dug out the Waterloo and City line. And I love this because tens of thousands of city commuters walk past this every day and have probably never realised it's here. So we really are at the real end. That's it, Waterloo and City line, all 11 tube lines done bringing this series of secrets of the underground to an end. I hope you also realise that in every one I had a tube map that got progressively older in date as the videos went on. And of course there was the caption thing as well. You got the caption thing right? No? You didn't see the caption thing? Okay, go back and watch every video and the first letter of the first line of every caption spells out a word. It's an anagram, mix it up, see what you get. See ya. The caption thing, by the way, uh, is a lie. Uh, I just really hope that for a second there you went, oh wow, he's done something really clever. Uh, and in fact, I haven't. But I did think about it a little bit too late. 